Welcome. I'm Doug Kennedy with Kennedy Training Network. This is the first of our 2023 series of monthly Train the Trainer style webcasts. Thank you for being one of the over 300 locations. I say locations, some of you are watching individually. Perhaps you work remote, perhaps you're at your desk right now. Many of you are gathered in a meeting room, boardroom, or office. So I'm super excited. The, today's topic is the four pillars of hospitality excellence. I wanna first thank our sponsors, Better Talent, Steve Trover and team, thank you for sponsoring us, Track Hospitality Software, a, TNN, a TNS company. You actually sponsored this webcast and executed it on your own since 2015. And of course, Travel Outlook. So as I, um, a premium call center and the only call center certified by Kennedy Training Network through our three-step process. Now, we've been doing this with TravelNet Solutions Track Hospitality Software since 2015, but we decided this year to open it up to the entire lodging industry worldwide. And looking at our registration list, many of you are also from outside companies outside of the industry. And I truly hope to bring value to those of you who are watching live in particular, and also to those who registered knowing that you'll get the video at the end. In fact, if you do watch this on your own, you'll be able to share it with anyone who missed it. So a little bit about our company. I'm coming to you today from the KTN headquarters office. We're in a town called Davie, Florida, near Fort Lauderdale. If you don't know where that is, it's near Miami. We do training all around the world. This is actually a photo of me presenting at the Ritz-Carlton, Moscow, Russia. I went from there to a premier hospitality group Hotel in Kiev, Ukraine. My heart goes out to both. What I learned from my experience in training over 15 countries, 49 out of 50 states, throughout Canada, Caribbean, Mexico, when it comes to hospitality, we're more alike than different. Our company provides training. We also do QA work in the form of mystery shopping. We also do quality assurance work in the form of call scoring for those of you who have call recording. We only train lodging. Within lodging, we train the world's largest hotel, the Venetian Las Vegas. A few years back, I got to go there. They have over 7,000 rooms. We've also been working with the Castle Hill Inn, and I think you're on the webcast today. Newport, Rhode Island, 35 rooms. That's actually where Mr. Marriott stays when he goes on vacation sometimes. I train only in a few topics. We train hotel sales, group event sales. We train reservation sales. Many of you on the call today know res voice reservations has not gone away. It's actually alive and well. And then we train in the area of hospitality and also front desk, front office hospitality. But today's topic applies to every single person in any kind of lodging. And increasingly, we're learning really in any kind of industry. So let's open the curtains here and get started with our theme. What does it take to create heartfelt hospitality? We're gonna look at the four pillars today. A lot of people in a lot of companies and even quite a few hotels think it is all about scripted politeness. What is scripted politeness, you ask? Well, if you've ever called for tech support to your cell phone company. Now, I've been a Sprint customer for a while, but for my convenience, they merged with T-Mobile. Oh, how fun. And then there's Verizon, and then of course, AT&T or maybe your favorite tech company is Spectrum or Comcast, and you call and oh, they are so scripted and textbook perfect, and now they've learned to train their people to say empathetic statements, oh, so I understand your brand new phone is not working that you got in the store, and that must be frustrating, Mr. Kennedy. And then they go through the whole call and the whole call, and then they say, oh, Mr. Kennedy, um, unfortunately, you need to go back to the store, but before I let you go, have I resolved all your needs today? <laughs> and thank you for being a valued T-Mobile customer or Spectrum customer. I don't wanna pick on T-Mobile. They're kind of like the rest of them. But at that moment, Bad Doug and Good Doug are having a little debate in my head and Bad Doug wants to say, you know, what I really wanna stay emotionally, but Good Doug takes over because I imagine a person sitting in a call center trying to make a living with a QA person listening in that will terminate them if they don't say, have a resolved all your needs? Thank you for being a valued customer. Scripted politeness does not get the job done. Now, 
Heartfelt hospitality is requires an elegant communication style. We want to be able to use all the politeness we want to use. If you're at a hotel, you know about the Forbes AAA or perhaps your brand standards audit. If you're with a Marriott Hilton, Intercon, Accor, we know we have to hit those marks, but if you do it without the hard parts, it is completely meaningless, at least if you ask me. Let me give you an example that I hear all the time. Now, some of you are meeting me for the first time. Many of you follow me on LinkedIn. I invite you to do that. You'll see my latest training articles every month. I write at least two, sometimes three. Often I write about this, I think it was January. My word that I never wanna hear when I check in, but I hear it probably 40, 50% of the time. Checking in? <laughs> it makes us sound like scripted robots. Or another example, when you are dining at a restaurant and you walk up to the hostess stand. Oh, in particular, when you're the only business traveler at a couple's resort, that will actually be me probably Monday night or Tuesday night. I'll be training majestic resorts in the Dominican Republic and I'll be staying at their couples only. They have a family one. And I will be the only person dining alone and I will walk up to the hostess stand and I hope they do not say what I hear a lot. Good evening just one at that moment i feel like capital l loser on my forehead yes just one no one wants to have dinner with me tonight i'll take the table in the corner recently i stayed at a hotel oh i almost said the brand i was checking in particularly a long flight and then not only did i get checking in but get this scripted politeness i landed three and a half hours late it was a sunday night avis rental car oh i'm avis preferred because i'm a frequent renter and my name is usually on that light up board kennedy space 1a but it said check counter i ran into delay after delay i had to fight traffic i oh i had to stop at a supermarket to pick up a few items i was going to be there a week you ever tried to find six items at a mega super supermarket <laughs> Finally, I arrived at 9.30 at night, as opposed to the 6 p.m. time I expected, and I walked in with my luggage and my little garment bag, which is a garment bag and a computer bag. She looks right at me and says, checking in? And I said, oh, actually, I am. I need a credit card and an ID. I felt like I had been pulled over by the New Jersey State Trooper. And so I complied, of course, and then I thought everything was gonna change. She said, oh, Mr. Kennedy, what brings you to Branchburg, New Jersey? And I was very excited because we have a new client. It's the PPAC Gladstone Bank. It is the only bank, well, at least in a long time, that I've trained for hospitality. And by the way, if you need a great bank, I highly recommend them, full disclosure. But they are so committed to hospitality, they booked nine days of training. So she said, what brings you to Brandsburg, New Jersey? I said, oh, I got this new client. I'm so excited. I'm going to be actually staying with you for the next three, I'm gonna stay three weeks in the next two months. She said, oh, very good, 102. <laughs> Scripted politeness. If that's all we do, folks, this will be a hotel front desk very soon, all right? You know, I, I don't know if I actually have the robot. I just saw yesterday that someone has created now a hologram, so you can actually be, hello, I'm Doug Kennedy, are you checking in, right? And instead of having just the kiosk check-in, which by the way, those kiosk check-ins have not had a lot of utilization from what I hear. That is fake, that is disingenuous service. We've all had that, right? Maybe a new word for you here, I call it obsequious. That means fake, fawning, insincere. So what we wanna do is take that journey from the head, knowing the scripted politeness, to the heart of heartfelt hospitality. And we wanna care, and we wanna have those human connections now, I train some of the world's best hotels. I train hotels of all sorts. I train vacation rental. In fact, shout out to Jack Lingo, vacation rental side of your real estate office. I was there in Delaware, Carousel Resort. I was there on Monday. Um, I do a lot in a lot of other places, not just luxury hotels, but I often look at the hotels I'm training and I'm thinking, why do they need me? Because they're so good at what they do. And I think the reason is, they want to strive to get better. Let me tell you about a very special resort. Now, this resort is, people ask me all the time, Doug, what is your favorite hotel ever that you've ever stayed in? That would be hard, and I certainly wouldn't want to say that publicly, but I will tell you one of my top five is the Nizuk Resort Cancun. 
look at these photos. In fact, I've taken even better ones than this. Every time I go there, I'm clicking that camera. Nizuk is beautiful. It's right near the Cancun airport. So you, you fly in, you take a short drive, and the views are stunning, the architecture amazing, the culinary fantastic, but what I love most are the people parts. When you arrive for the first time, the first thing that you will notice is that the door person, the bell person, are standing there to greet you, and they do a heartfelt gesture. This is actually a photograph I took. If you want to Google search Doug Kennedy Nizuk Resort, you'll probably have the article that I wrote, a training article about them. And they greet you, but if you notice right here, these gentlemen in this photo look very sincere. And everywhere you go, you notice that they do this gesture. Now, you expect it maybe from the doorman, the bellman, the front desk, but even when I go out jogging, I will see a landscaper. They stop what they're doing and they look and they connect. What's kind of funny, I train a lot of the other four and five star resorts now, and I seem a lot of people are copying this, but they're forgetting the hard part. Their version is, at Nizuk, they put the heart in it. So I went to train there recently. Here's a photo of us from last, uh, last year, and we did a training class there. And I was talking about taking the journey from the head where we know the standards that the luxury rating systems are looking for, and taking the journey to the heart. And someone came up to me and they said, oh, Doug, you know, we have a word in Spanish for exactly what you're talking about. It's called Sentipasante. And I said, Sentipa what? <laughs> Sentipasante. So I said, can you write that down? Because I had no idea how to spell it. But maybe you'll take a screen capture now and maybe you'll look it up or Google search Doug Kennedy Sentipasante and you will find an article that I wrote for your next stand up meeting, managers, or those of you who are, learn who are wanting to aspire in your own career. It is a term that describes people who integrate emotion and intellect in a unified way. They have learned to rely on both empathy and intelligence. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is when we really pull it all together. We create hospitality excellence. That we're not just scripted, uh, robotic people going through to hit brand standards, but we put heart into it and that is what we're going to finish on in our class our webcast today so this is part of the content that i've been really my core content i've been doing this for 33 years some of you are watching this webcast you are not even 33 years old and you were looking at me you're like i cannot believe that guy has been doing this 33 years he doesn't look that old right that's what you're thinking i know but i love sharing these core principles around the world this is where it all starts, the human heart. Now, I will tell you that if you make them part of your business philosophy, you're gonna create those memorable guest experiences. They will do the two things we want every guest to do, come back next time and say good things about us to their friends through word of mouth, but also through reviews, social media posts. It's good for business, but if you make them part of your personal philosophy, you're gonna have a lot more fun. Now, I don't know if you ever think about this. You ever think about how much time we spend with our work family <laughs> as opposed to our actual blood family? And, you know, unless you win the lottery, and good luck to you on that, okay? I don't know if you have the Powerball where you're listening from, if you're in the state or our many international uh, attendees today, you probably have a lottery. Most countries I go to do. The odds are not very good. It's okay to buy one ticket. My wife, Kathy, she buys a ticket every Saturday. We go to the supermarket. I go to the checkout line to load everything onto the conveyor. She goes to buy her one lottery ticket. And when that Powerball gets up above 500 million, she starts telling me all the things she's gonna do with the money for her mommy. She still calls her 78 year mom, mommy. Isn't that sweet? I married the farmer's daughter. She grew up with nothing and made a great life for herself. She's going to take care of her brother. Everybody in the family gets their student loan and their mortgage paid off. I'm like, well, what do I get when you win, honey? She says, you get to stay married to me, and that should be enough. So good luck. I don't have the heart to remind her. It's one in 303 million. Okay, play a lottery ticket, but realize you're going to have to work. And if you work and use the spirit of 
heartfelt hospitality, you're going to have a lot more fun. So let's get into our first of our four principles. Hospitality requires caring about as well as caring for others. If you've been to my classes, you've read my book, you've read my articles, you know I talk about this a lot. When we care for others, we do our job. We answer the phone, we give directions, we reconfirm a reservation, we answer basic questions, we take their credit card and verify their driver's license and give them a room key, we serve a meal, we clean a room, we fix whatever's going on in the room and change the light bulb or the AC filters, we care for them. When we care about them, it's a whole new level and that's the hospitality part. And that requires empathy and understanding. And I encourage all you all to always think about what is happening on the other side of the conversation, on the other side of the guest room door. Take time to think about it, what they're experiencing on the inside the accommodations, on the other side of the chatter email. You know, when I started out, I worked at a Resort Griffin Gate Marriott, Lexington, Kentucky. We had about half business travelers that were the core Marriott. Yes, there only had 125 hotels in 1981 when I started there as a college student, as a bellman. And the other half was resort guests. Now, growing up, you know, I had never stayed in a hotel like a Marriott. In fact, when I, we were kind of the first rung of middle class, we usually stayed in a camper. <laughs> or on the floor in our sleeping bags, because we didn't have air mattresses, you know, at our aunt and uncle's house or mom's friend's houses. And if we stayed at a hotel, you can bet it had a number in the chain, Motel 6, Super 8. And now I'm working at a Marriott and I'm thinking, wow, this is such a great place. I would love to stay here if only I could afford it. I didn't really make enough, although they did give us employee rate. And I would look at the guest and I would wonder why are some people so cranky and annoyed, miserable when they stay here, even some of the ones on vacation. And now that I live on the other side, you know, I do 70 days of training a year, 71 actually last year, it's 2000, about 2,500 days of training in my career. That's about three, that's about 4,000 nights on the road. Sometimes I get home the night of the training, usually it's a two night. And now I know. I know what it's like. So I want us to always think about what's happening on the other side. A lot of times it's good stuff and happy stuff. And I, and I think back to times when I took my first business trip, attended my first conference, starting my business to make sales calls, but it's not always happy. Sometimes the person there in a business suit, she's there to terminate a key employee, close down a branch, uh, file a lawsuit, finalize a divorce, you go to a hospital stay. Now, in looking at our registration list, we have a lot of resorts and even hotels. A lot of people are traveling. If you're a, a highway side Hilton Garden Inn or a Holiday Inn Express, you have people passing by on the way to Thanksgiving or Hanukkah or Easter or Passover or July 4th trips. But especially resorts, you actually work in a memory factory where people will take photos that they'll actually go to CVS and Walgreens and print. <laughs> well, at least maybe they'll put on Facebook and it'll come up in memories. They will be hung on the wall for years to come. So for our leaders today, I recommend you take a moment um, after today's class, a couple of things for discussion. And even if you're not attending with your manager, I hope you take time to think about the stories playing out on the other side of your guest room doors when you talk to your guests and not just say it's they're here on business or leisure or vacation there's usually a purpose behind that birthdays anniversaries on the leisure side family reunions also memorial service celebration of life hospital stays all the different life stories playing out now let's move on to principle two Bringing out the best in others brings out the best in ourselves. I love this part of the training because it's a good reminder of what it's like to travel. Uh, actually, I landed about 
11.45 last night. Um, I flew out of Fort Lauderdale and I decided, oh, I'll just drive to the airport. Well, the only thing is I forgot that I was taking a return flight to Miami. <laughs> so I landed, got an Uber to the Fort Lauderdale airport, got home very late. I know what it's like on the road. You know, the, the woman sitting next to me yesterday, she travels on business. We started chatting about, you know, how we have all the tricks, like keeping a toiletries bag always packed. It can be a very tough life. Now, let's talk about leisure guests for a moment, but we also could talk about business travelers. And again, I'm gonna recommend you do this with your hotel team or your vacation rental team or your resort team or your b, &B team or your in team that I cover everyone. Uh, or if you're outside of this industry and joining us, talk about what your customers go through before they walk in the door of your store or branch. When we bring out the best in others, we bring out the best in ourselves. Now, frequently in my classes, such as I taught on Monday and Wednesday on the Atlantic coast, we take this picture. And um, this week, we, she was a mom, okay, about to go on vacation. If I'm in a city center hotel training and have mostly business travelers, she is a businesswoman. But I want you to think about the smiling, happy lady as a mom, for example, and in the interest of time, we'll make her a mom and we'll talk about leisure because we all have some leisure guests, even if you're in a resort destination. So she's going on vacation for a week in the summer and she has kids nine, seven, and then the cute little three-year-old. What is Friday night like for mom? Well, we have a whole discussion. You know, and I say, moms, what do you do when you get home from work? And I'm thinking, you know, cook dinner, pack. They're like, no, first thing, um, I open a bottle of wine, okay? Now I know there are real moms in my class. But before mom packs, she's gotta do the laundry. Apparently, a lot of moms actually clean the house, okay? Now, not to stereotype, I was a single parent for a while. I did a lot of those things. Maybe it's mom and mom or dad and dad, but for demonstration purposes, we're gonna make her a traditional mom. Now, let's think about she leaves at nine o'clock in the morning. What time did mom go to bed Friday night? <laughs> what time did mom wake up Saturday morning, okay? A lot of people say like, yeah, what time did dad wake up? Okay, I won't go there, but... Um, Anyways, you think about all of the emotions that are playing out in that vehicle along the way. Now, I don't know about you, but I grew up in a family that traveled, like I said, usually pulling a camper, but there was four of us packed into a station wagon, and I raised my kids in a Honda Odyssey minivan. Yeah, it was very cool. We had the first flip down TV for them to share. And of course, today, most of you moms and dads, you don't want to drive a minivan. You drive a crossover vehicle. <laughs> to me, from the back, it looks a lot like a minivan, but crossover is much cooler. What you hear today is the same things I heard, oh, 20 years ago, and the same thing my parents heard about 45 years ago. And I bet you can name them right now as a group. Are we there yet? Actually, they know that today because they have maps or iPhones. <laughs> Um, I'm hungry. I got to go. He's touching me. He's doing it again. And today, new things that our parents didn't hear. I lost my charger. There's no internet. By the time mom and dad arrive, a lot of emotions have played out. Now, if you're a city center corporate hotel, you can do the same thing as a business traveler. Late flights, lost luggage, flight delays, cramped seats. Airline food, that's actually an oxymoron. <laughs> airline food, there is no airline food. So make a list, have a discussion with your team. What are the challenges people go through when they're traveling? And in the door, as a result of all this, walks the devil herself, wearing horns with the pitchfork in hand. Oh, we have two choices, ladies and gentlemen. We could be reactive. We could treat others the way others are treating you. Who thinks they were raised right at home? Mom and dad, or mom or dad, or granny, or mom and mom and dad and dad. Did they teach you to treat others the way others are treating you? I don't think so. The lesson was treat others the way you want to be treated. This is a pillar of every world religion. Christianity, Judaism, Islam, Buddha, Baha'i. All across, who did I leave out? Hindu, um, 
It is a principle around the world, treat others the way you would want to be treated, not the way they're treating you. But what I find, nice guests, they get nice service. Indifferent guests, they get indifferent service. Rude guests, they get a room key and not much else. What we want to do is instead turn the tide on their negativity, turn the devil into the angel. You noticed it's the same lady. Have you ever turned the tide on a negative guest? All of a sudden she's smiling, she's happy. She's um, the kind person. I, I used to use the term turn the tide. Now where I just was, you know, in Delaware, Rehoboth Beach, Ocean City, Maryland, they get it, turn the tide, because, you know, they've stood on the beach, many of you have, and the tide is rolling in and it hits your ankles and your calves and almost your knees, and then the tide switches and the energy of that ocean flows the other direction, okay? You can turn the devil into the angel very often. Now, notice I said most guests. We're going to talk about the other ones in a minute. I have a new term today. Instead of turn the tide, I call it flipping their vibe. <laughs> flip their energy. You literally can flip the energy of a guest. I want you all to think of yourselves when you come into work the next time, blasting out a 5G level of positivity. Think of yourself as Susan Storm. Some of you like Marvel comics, or maybe at least the movies. Susan Storm, Fantastic Four, The Invisible Woman. Her superpower, she can put out a force field and it deflects away all the negativity. Imagine yourself as a 5G network. If not, you're gonna show up, you're gonna be a weak analog signal and you will be overpowered by the up negativity of others. Now, you know, I've been talking about this for a very long time, but I actually now have scientific evidence to back this up. I came across an article that was actually quoting an institution called the HeartMath Institute. Take a moment here, check them out. They do a lot of work in the medical field, and they also work with people in high-stress jobs. Now, people that have chronic um, PTSD, you know, it's very horrible to come back from a war and the things you have seen. Thankfully, I've never had to learn that. But there are those of us in this world to go out every day and drive as a paramedic or work in the ER and see it again and again. And those are the people they work with. Now, the article that I read taught me something new that said right here that the heart, according to heart math, is the most powerful source of electromagnetic energy in the entire human body. It's a hundred times more powerful than the brain. Some of us have had EKGs. Yeah, they stick the little sensors all over your body. Kind of hurts when they rip them off, at least for guys. They're saying the magnetic field can be detected three feet away from the body. And this is scientific evidence according to hard math. I'm not making this up. Check out this quote. I will read it to you. The data presented thus far indicates that signals and information can be communicated energetically between individuals and have measurable biological effects. Let me sum all this up. It basically says when someone gets three feet away from you, you're feeling their vibe, and your vibe interacts with their vibe. And if you're a weak analog signal, you will be overpowered. If you are 5G positivity, you will change their vibe. You will flip their vibe. People have an actual energy field. Now, I've been working with the public since I was nine years old. I grew up working for my mom's craft shop, Kennedy Craft Supply Store. From age nine to 20, I worked Tuesdays, Thursdays, after school, and every Saturday. From then, I worked in the hotel business for eight years. And after that, I've been in the training field, traveling on airplanes for 30, almost 35 years, um, 34 years as of May 1st. And you know what I said after reading this? I said, duh. We all know people put off an energy field. You have those people in your not life. Every time you see them, they had that positive vibe and you cannot wait to see them. You see them on the work schedule and you're like, oh, I'm so glad they're working today, right? And then we have the people that suck the energy out of the room. And that's what we're gonna talk about next. You're thinking of a particular guest right now, aren't you? You're thinking about somebody maybe in your family, but be a vibe flipper. now. Let's move on and talk about the reality, folks. There are negative personalities in this world. 
I always do this. I want you all to think about, in your lodging company, how many rooms do you have? How many vacation rental? How many condos? How many villas? Let's see. We have some luxury RV parks today. How many luxury RV spaces do you have? Now, how many people are in the average bedroom? Let's say you're a 100 room uh, Fairfield Marriott, okay? Your average guest count is probably 1.5. You have 150 guests. Maybe you're a giant convention hotel, it's like some of our clients, Walt Disney World, Swan and Dolphin, approximately 1,600 rooms, two point something guests per room. You have 3,000 guests. You're going to have a percentage of difficult guests. They're not all going to be happy. The sooner we realize that, the better we're going to be. And then we learn to use our power of release over the negative guest bullies, and we can move back into the headspace of hospitality. I wish someone would have told me this when I started out. I thought everybody was going to be nice and happy to walk into the Marriott Griffin Gate. Now, I'm going to share with you some lessons that I'm still working on. I teach this, but I have not mastered it, but I try every day. I want us to remember the power of release of negativity. First of all, when you work with difficult people, as I said a moment ago, you're bound to have connections with some people who just are the pessimists. I thought this picture when I bought these photos, this is the perfect pessimist. She complains her entire stay, or let's say you're working in a restaurant. She complains during the entire meal and she comes back every uh, Saturday night or two Saturday nights a month, or she stays at your hotel the entire stay complains last thing she does is give you a list of problems and then she rebooks to come next time she is the pessimist then we've got this fellow here he is the classroom bully he's the guy from your fifth grade class that kicked the back of your chair when the teacher wasn't looking oh he didn't do bad things enough to get expelled and kicked out of the school he just picked 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 just like he's now grown up and he comes to your hotel and he picks, picks, picks. Not enough to get put on the do not allow in the door list. I'm pretty sure a lot of hotels have that. Do not rent to list if you're a vacation rental. He doesn't get the police called on him or security to escort him out of the building. He just picks, picks, and picks. So you've got a percentage of the population that are one of these two, but I wanna remind us of the problem we have we do not know which is which. So I want to remind us, we never know what's going on behind that person's mask. Are they truly a difficult person with the evil personality? The four letter word I won't say in a public webcast with well over 300 people attending, or is it simply a nice person going through a difficult problem? Tell you a quick story I heard from a client I was at a resort up near Sarasota, Florida three weeks ago. Ironically, I heard almost the same story last week in Ocean City, Maryland. But the story in Sarasota, Florida, there was a participant there and she said, oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. We, had a get, we have a guest in house now. She's staying here for an extended stay. And when she came in, she said, she came in hot. She was going to be staying there for a while. She didn't like her room. She kept on looking at a whole bunch of rooms. She kept on complaining. She made disparaging remarks about the property. And she said, but you know, as I got to know her, it turns out she came here to get away from it. And then two or three hands, she came here to get away from everything because she had just lost her husband and her mom within the last, I forget, last couple of months two or three hands went up and they all said, oh, you're talking about Miss so-and-so, she's so nice. Oh yeah, I love her. She brought me dessert the other night from a restaurant. And it turned out when they got to know this guest, she had lost her husband unexpectedly and she'd been providing extended care for her terminal mom in hot, at home hospice. They both passed away. And by the way, she had just raised three kids. <laughs> And she came to the hotel, and they were young adults now. She said, you know, I've been taking care of other people in my life for so very long. I need some me time. And once they got to know her, they realized she was actually a kind, sweet, endearing person. Now, on the other hand, we truly get the bully. 
okay? Just be glad, I had a client yesterday say this in a class, he was actually the company owner. He said, yeah, the good thing is, they'll be gone in a few days. <laughs> That's the nice thing in the hotel business. Remember, we are emotional creatures living in a physical world. Some people are just upset, but then we have the bullies. When you encounter the bully, I want you all to remember to own your power. I love to use this example. I credit my friend Galen Williamson Grigas. She had a great book I highly recommend called Trigger Proof. Trigger Proof Yourself. It's not a hotel book. It's for anybody in every situation. Don't. One of her rules is don't give them the power. It's like if you give them, if you let someone else make you upset. You give them the power to your remote control. Okay, take it. Press the red button. I'll cry on a webcast in front of 300 people. Go ahead. Press, press the green. I'm going to call my wife and yell at her for no reason. Go ahead. Now, press the yellow one. I'm going to have my first drink of alcohol tonight. First drink in nine years. My future is up to you. Go ahead. You control me. Own your power, folks. Don't give it away to others. I'm going to paraphrase my favorite speaker of all time, the late Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. I'll rephrase his words a little bit for you today. I want you to remember no one can make you angry. Break that chain of negativity. No one can make you upset, and no one can assault you unless you give them the power to do so. You can choose to be angry, or you can choose to move on. Now, I'm going to share another word I learned I learned recently, I love to read online. I read many different publications. And I read an article in the New York Times. It was a psychology article about the concept of ruminating. And I looked it up, Merriam-Webster will tell you this. When you ruminate, you go over in the mind repeatedly, often casually and slowly again and again. You chew repeatedly for an extended period. <laughs> Let's put this into hotel terms. You take the difficult guest home and you walk in the door. And whoever you live with, well, if you're new to the hotels or travel industry, they will say, how was your day? Oh my gosh, you can't believe what I went through, honey. Ah, you're not even a drinker. You're like, crack that bottle, I need a double. Yeah, if you've been in the business a while, they know not to ask. It's fine to have a venting partner. I'm pretty sure right now, if you're sitting with the class, and on the count of three, two, one, I say call out the name of your venting partner. Three, two, one. That's fine. Have a venting partner. Pick one person. You vent to them, they vent to you. All right. And that's okay. But do not tell Sally and then Tom and then Jane and then Sue and then Beth and then Doug and then Robert and then go home and tell it to your spouse. Let's move on, our last segment. Wow, we're exactly 40 minutes, pretty cool. The road to hospitality excellence can be a joy ride if we embrace the philosophies of heartfelt hospitality, if we live by these principles. I want us to remember every day, to power up your positivity before you punch into work. It is literally getting in a mindset and making it your job to work in a memory factory and meet people from all around. My Uber driver last night, he said, oh, where are you coming in from? I said, I'm coming from Delaware. He's like, oh, that's great. He said, I have a map. I've been doing this for a while. I started checking off boxes. I picked up somebody from almost every state, but I haven't got Delaware. I said, I'm sorry to let you know I'm coming home. I'm from Florida. He said, oh, that makes it interesting for him. People from all around the world you meet in your job. What a cool thing. This is really the maybe like 50 years of international travel and worldwide travel, and we can jump on a plane without having to be super wealthy and going to Douglas D3, DC3 in the 50s. And we have people driving the interstate highways, which were only built in the 60s and 70s. And we get to meet people from around the world. Think about that. Make it your job every day to flip the vibe. Make it your job every day to bring out the best in others. When you do, you're gonna bring out the best in yourselves. I don't know what you've learned in life and hopefully you're a lot wiser than I've been. It's taken me a lot of years to acquire some modest degree of wisdom. But one thing I've observed, especially recently, the happiest people are the givers, not the takers. 
and think about the people you know in your life, the elderly people. I think to my mom, I think of my mentor, Howard Firetag. He passed away one week ago, actually two weeks ago on March 1st, at the age of 94, still teaching hospitality at the Virginia Tech School of Hospitality, which they named the Howard Firetag School of Hospitality and Tourism, as recently as last fall. What keeps this man going for 94 years? He's the kindest person you ever know. I posted a memory. If you find me on LinkedIn, Douglas Kennedy, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Davie, Florida, and you can see the post I did. There must have been, I don't know, 75 people that commented on that. He touched a lot of lives. Make it your job to shine the light of hospitality every single day. And when you do that, it reflects right back on you. It's like when you're a kid, if, I don't know if you ever did this, sneak in a flashlight into your bedroom. My brother and I shared a room. We were probably, I don't know, four and seven or five and eight. And we sneak in a flashlight and we read our comic books. Sometimes we take that light and flash it in the mirror. When you flash your light in the mirror, it reflects and lights up the whole room. That's what happens when we walk into work with 5G positivity. It reflects right back on us. So how do you power your flashlight? How do you power up your 5G? Maybe you go to church or temple or mosque. Maybe you go to meditation. Maybe you hug your baby or you walk your dog. But find that source. For me, my source is gratitude. You know, a lot of bad things happened during COVID. I know a lot of you lost people. We did. I know a lot of you lost incomes. We did. Imagine now we're a training company for the lodging industry. <laughs> there wasn't a lot of people traveling for the first couple of months. And we are not an essential service. If you owned a hotel, would you pay the power bill and the payroll? Or would you pay your training company? We had over $100,000 in accounts receivable. We had two kids in college. My wife bought the family farm, 35 acres, to save it. We're helping to support my in-laws. And all of a sudden, it came to a screeching halt. And I wanted to hide under a rock. But when you marry the farmer's daughter, seventh generation farmer, you don't get to have self-pity in your relationships. She said, we're going to that office. We're going to make it work. And I started a new habit. Maybe I would recommend you give it a try too. When my cell phone rings in the morning for my alarm and I hit the snooze, but I don't go back to sleep, I call it my five minute gratitude moment. I did it this morning. First of all, I'm grateful I woke up. You don't have to be my age to be grateful you woke up. Our youngest person on the webcast has probably lost a peer. I'm grateful I have a wife that still loves me out of um, a lot of years of ups and downs in our lives and our relationship, including COVID, and all the other many difficult times. I'm grateful I didn't wake up in Kiev, Ukraine, or Turkey, or for that matter, uh, Parejo, California, where the levee just broke and it's flooded again. I'm grateful to be doing this webcast and have over 300 people signing up to spend this time with me. And if you start your day with gratitude, it will fuel your spirit of hospitality. Gratitude, ladies and gentlemen, is truly a superpower. And so in conclusion, um, first of all, I hope I brought value to you watching live or watching this on replay. Thank you again to our sponsors, Track TravelNet Solutions, Travel Outlook Premium Call Center, Better Talent. I hope you've enjoyed the first in our webcast. We'll be doing these again the next one comes up in April and we have them every month. Go to ktnwebcast.com. Keep us in mind for on-site training, conference speaking, live webcam training. We have an excellent team that will come on Zoom, not in a big group, but small group interactive. We do telephone shops. We also do remote call scoring. So if you have a call recording platform, we do QA work for you and our front desk, part of hospitality certification. Thank you for joining me today. Join us in the future. Email me, Doug, at Kennedy Training Network. And we look forward to having you, hopefully, to join us again. Have a great day.